Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you. Ash pa roka divrahaski. Oh, no forsaking. I am who he says I am. You are for me, not against me. Oh, I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you said I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you said I am. Father, thank you. We thank God for such a glamorous moment under his presence. Hallelujah. This is Word in Season Encounter broadcast. Wise broadcast. And this is the church without walls. Hallelujah. The, this platform have been consistent and responsible for um, representing the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ and ensuring its implementation in civilization. Hallelujah. Through the constant proclamation of God's word, doctrinally based every week. Hallelujah. And um, we come your way once again this afternoon to ensure that... Um, the Lord Jesus Christ is again represented in every home and in every life. I want us to take a moment in a um, few seconds and just thank God for our lives. Thank God for your family. Thank God for your husband. Thank God for your kids. Thank God for life. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the privilege of engagement. Thank you for the privilege of life. Thank you for the privilege of association. Thank you for declaring us innocent amidst the plethora of challenges. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for protecting us. We thank you for diverting the arrows that fly by day and terminating the pestilences that walk by midnight. We thank you that even whilst we were falling, our foot we didn't hit against any rock. We thank you for placing us on angels' wings. We thank you for supernatural encounters that have supplied conviction to our Christian lives. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Take all the glory, take all the honor. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So um, we are here once again to look into a very, um, a very serious issue that Jesus was involving. And today's caption, you can see, um, we want to deal with uh, provoking divine attention. Provoking divine attention. Um, last week, we spoke about, um, behold, I will do a new thing, and we agreed that the moment God is talking about new things, it is beyond giving you a new car and a new job. These are additions. Anytime a man grow in grace, these things are purported to follow such a man. Um, seek ye first the kingdom and all other things shall be added to you. So mostly when God is talking about doing a new thing, God is looking at embarking on a new project in the spirit of the man which translates into the soul of the man, then finally on the seed of the man. The seed talks about anything that comes out of that man. It could be a wife, it could be a child, it could be a job. So when the spirit is renewed and made anew, the soul now is transformed by its consistency to the word of God. And when that transformation takes place in the mind, it now translates into efficient management of any resources committed to that man. And we said that a money only make meaning in the hands of a born again, genuinely born again, God-fearing Christian. When money found in the wrong hands, it can sponsor plagues, it can sponsor walls, it can sponsor sickness and diseases, it can sponsor agenda that can help truncate the purposes of God in a generation. So we agreed on that. And today we want to look at provoking divine attention. Um, looking at the current world we live in, how are we supposed to live? Eight billion people on earth. How do I get the attention of God? 
what am I supposed to do? What are the indicators in place to ensure that my remembrance button in heaven is also activated? Hallelujah. And this case is, is very significant to me because of the involvement of the Lord Jesus himself in this case. It's a very sensitive case because there are certain characters that I want us to look at. And if your Bible is with you, you can go with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 15 from verse 21 to 28. Our technical team will project it. Matthew chapter 15 from verse 21 to 28. Hallelujah. Yes, so um, the, 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 the text had certain significant indicators that I want us to look at. Yes, Matthew chapter 15 from verse 21 to 28. It said, woe to you. Well, yes, leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. We'll talk about Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from that region came to him crying out loud, Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is miserably possessed by a demon. This is fine. You can, you can pause here. You can come back. Yes, you can. Hallelujah. Now, um, this is a very interesting caption because the city of the uh, issue of Tai and Sidon even is another story you must consider because the previous scripture that our technical team projected, uh, Matthew, is it to 11, 21? Jesus was using this same city to warn a particular city that if the gospel and the good work that was done in Tai and Sidon was proclaimed in Bethsaida, and which other city? Bethsaida and one other city I want us to be very uh, updated with. Matthew chapter 11. Leaving that place, no, Matthew chapter 11 verse 21. Bethsaida and Chorazin, yes. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracle that were performed in you had been performed in Tai and Sidon, they would have repented long ago. So Chorazin and Bethsaida were won using Tai and Sidon as a case study. So uh, the Tai and Sidon is an ancient town that was represented in the Mediterranean coast, our current day Lebanon. And history tells us that this great city was conquered by Alexander the Great. Uh, they are a city that is known for idolatry, criminology, and even though their land is fertile, they are involved in a lot of criticism of the prophets that the Lord has sent to them. Tai and Sidon is a strange land that is identified with all sorts of iniquity and temptations. They have rejected the prophets of God and have uh, idolized idolatry to an extent that even Jesus goes there to preach, did miracles there. They did not take his word seriously. Hallelujah. Now, when you read the book of Joshua chapter 19 verse 29, you will know that Tyre and Sidon was part of the land allocated to the tribe of Israel. Specifically, Asha was won by God to destroy this city because of the plethora of iniquity that has come upon the city. Are we on the same page? Asha was the one who was handed over the city of Tyre and Sidon to destroy, but he neglected and disobeyed God. Now, anytime sin becomes the lifestyle of a territory, anytime sin becomes the lifestyle of a city, God is mandated to destroy that city for the safety of the nearby city. Are we on the same page? Yes. So, Tai and Sidon happen to be one of these cities. They are known for idolatry, criticism of God's prophets, worldliness, and disobedience. So, Asha was the man God handed over the city to for total destruction. And he didn't do it. He disobeyed God. So Jesus had need to go to Tyre and Sidon 
And then in the course of his journey, he encountered this strange woman whom the Bible recorded that came to Jesus to seek for help so that the demon-possessed daughter or the daughter who is sick can be healed. Hallelujah. Prophet Maxwell Edu, my very bosom friend, he, he and I were talking about this subject and I gleaned a lot of revelation from it. Now, no, this looks like our current nations. There are nations on earth, in Africa, in Europe, in the world today, that there are thousands of churches, but the moral compass of that nation is still in disrepute. Are we on the same page? There are genuine prophets who are criticized, who are vilified, who are, uh, who are rusticated from their own town because they represented the ordinances of God. So, whatever you see today is a repetition of what was there before. It is not new. It is not new to be genuine today and be called fake. It is not new to be a genuine prophet and then you are frowned upon. It is not new that the gospel is preached and people reject it and insult Jesus and everybody that's around it. It is not new to go to school, get a PhD and come back to Africa and say Jesus is a scam. It is not new. People have done it in the past. Herod and the book Nazar, all those guys in the past were, 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 were professionals in rejecting the gospel. It is not new. But there are side effects in rejecting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Number one, purpose will elude you here on earth. And number two, there is eternal damnation where you are transported from hell for disobeying the gospel and dying in your iniquity and rejecting Jesus and transferred to the lake of fire on the final day. That one is for sure. There is no scientific fact that can change that transition. Hallelujah. Let me sound this uh, alarm first before I continue. So the woman ran to Jesus and he said he cried out loud that Lord save my daughter. Now this woman is a Canaanite and Jesus was supposed to be preaching to the Jews. So Bible scholars assume that Jesus went to Ty and Sidon to also let them know that he is sent to both the Jews and the Gentiles. That he is not here to play favoritism, nepotism, or racism. He is for the black man. He is for the white man. He is for the righteous and he is for the sinner. So going through Ty and Sidon is an exhibition of his universal assignment to mankind. Others also believe that it is a demonstration of his affection. Hallelujah. That come what may, the love of Jesus is intact. Jesus loves you so much that there is nothing you can do about it. Even if you don't want to be loved, the love is intact. Bible gave God a name in the book of 1 John. It says God is love. Not God has love. Not God is a practitioner of love. The entire embodiment of the faculty of the divine is love. That is why uh, people are rejecting him and he's still giving us time that all will come to repentance. Hallelujah. This is the love of God to you. So if you are watching me today and you have rejected the gospel, sickness is eating you up. The Holy Ghost is whispering to you even though you are not born again. That look for any of these healing uh, stream messages by Dr. Chris Oyakilome. Look for any of these any of these um, online prayers by Alpha Hour, NSSPD, or any of these online preaching and stick to it and be healed. But your pride is punishing you that Christianity is the white man's religion. Let's go back to our tradition. And you are dying. Pride is killing you. Yet you cannot subscribe to the intelligence of the Holy Spirit. Please, I project you the love of God. You don't need to slaughter a chicken and a fowl to be accepted into this fraternity. Just a simple surrender that Lord Jesus come into my heart and be my Lord and my, my my personal savior should set you free from those curses and yokes. Hallelujah. You can do that before we even finish the service. The Lord bless you. So, Ty and Sidon is known for disobedience, rebellion, criminality, and all sorts of vices. And yet, Jesus was preaching there. To an extent, when he appeared in Matthew 11, he must use his ministry in Ty and Sidon as a case study that if this was done in Bethesda, and this other town, then they could have repented. Hallelujah. Is it not amazing how there is crusade going on every day in Ghana? How there is crusade going on every day in Africa? How there are churches sprouting up each and every day? Yet, iniquity has dominated the moral fabric of our civilization. It is the same issue with Thai and Sidon. But there is a way out. The, 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 today's caption is how to secure divine attention. 
provoking divine attention. How can I get God to zoom his attention on me and my family? What are the indicators in place to ensure that I am also counted in the radar of the divine so that I can also have a place when he comes? Hallelujah. The woman made something. Let's go to the scripture again. Father, thank you. Mando Kopra Akadisha. The same scripture. Matthew chapter 25. Father, thank you. Matthew chapter 15, from verse 21 to 28. Matthew chapter 15. Let's go to the scripture again. He said that leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Please continue. And a Canaanite woman from that region came to him. Remember, Jesus didn't go to him. He came to him. Okay, we'll talk about this later. Crying out loud, Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is miserably possessed by a demon. It's okay. The woman came to him. When it comes to the issue of God, there is already a system in place to ensure that we get his attention. The woman came to him. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. The Bible says that if you look for me, you will find me. If you search for me with all your heart. Every patriarch, everybody in the Bible, aside the sovereign intervention of the divine in the affairs of man, everybody in the Bible who encountered God in diverse ways made time for God. Either they went for a crusade and the man of God spoke and they got repented or something happened and God got involved. Aside his sovereign intervention in issues like when Paul was going to massacre the Christians and Jesus appeared and intercepted his journey, there are a few of these. But in many of these guys, really, either they are fasting or they are tired of life looking for an answer, then God showed up. The woman went to and cried out loud, number one, the first provoker of divine attention is the issue of prayer. Hallelujah. Yes, prayer. You can write it down. In this case, the prayer of petition. When Jesus was encountered by this woman, he said, attend to me, for my daughter is possessed by a demon. That is prayer. Prayer of petition. Now, anytime a man wants to get God's attention, the idea is not to spend your whole life looking for answers on Google. Google is good. We all use it search engine optimization systems these are good but any man that want to enjoy divine attention must find a way to engage in a place of prayer prayer happens to be the common denominator in our stratosphere the muslims are praying the jews are praying christians are praying. even the traditionalists claim to be praying so Prayer is a non-negotiable factor in seeking divine attention. The woman went to God and prayed that I need my daughter to be healed. Hallelujah. Cornelius was not born again. It was his prayer and his arms giving that opened the portals. And immediately an angel was dispatched to ensure that his salvation is crystallized. So we can't downplay that. A man looking for answers from God must ensure that prayer life is not downplayed upon are we on the same page hallelujah now there, there, there is an issue it was not praying and miss it said my daughter is possessed with a demon that means the prayer must have a target why am i praying lord my family everybody is not born again i am the only person standing if you don't come in today all of us will be wiped out from the surface of the earth before your second coming there is a target for the prayer lord my marriage is my marriage does the lord has warned us many times when they come to praying and missed that a man praying and missed simply will have no answer from god so there is a need for your prayer to have a target a man seeking divine attention must ensure that prayer is a non-negotiable instrument in his dealings with God. Prayer. Hallelujah. Number two, please, um, yes, verse 22. And a Canaanite woman from that region came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Why my daughter is miserably possessed by a demon. Continue, verse 23. But Jesus did not answer a word. A friend of mine, Pastor 
Maxwell Edu said, Jesus did not answer a word. There is an answer, but just that there is no word to the answer. So if you pray and there is silence, the silence too is an answer. Such a wonderful revelation. Hallelujah. So his disciples came and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. Continue. But he answered and said, I am not sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, the second factor that will ensure divine provocation of God's attention is the factor of worship. The woman literally lied down before Jesus and said, I need help. Jesus gave us a, um, a particular formula that the time cometh where true worshippers will worship God in spirit and in truth. Now, a man seeking for God's attention, number one, please let us get this. God is a king. He is not a chief. God is not a president of one club that does contribution every month, waiting for people to fall into trouble. Then they help alleviate that issue. No. God is a king and his kingship rides on the pillars of justice, peace, total sovereignty over creation. Even our earthly kings, we go to them not empty-handed. The last time I was in um, the central region, Abu Abu, after Trifu Praso for a crusade with my team, and after we are done, the king of the village called, called us to come. When we went, we have to find a way to ensure we package something nicely to meet him because we don't meet kings empty-handed. Now, when you come to God, God demands worship. You worship with your life. You worship with gifts. Even baby Jesus, when he was encountered by these wise guys who came from the east, they came with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because these are revelations that you don't worship God empty-handed. The woman went to Jesus, bowed down, worship him, identify with sovereignty that my daughter needs deliverance. Hallelujah. She prayed. He answered her with no word. She worshipped. No word. Look at the kind of word Jesus gave the woman. But he answered and said, this is after worship. I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Continue. The woman came, knelt before him, worship even after this. Worship, knelt before him that daddy, have mercy, I'm not sent to your people. Worship, worship before him. Lord, help me, she said. So, despite, continue, despite everything Jesus was doing, the woman was praying, the woman was worshiping. Worship, number two. But Jesus replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Hmm. Oh, God. A man that needs divine attention, a territory that needs divine attention, a nation that needs divine attention must normalize prayer. Number two, must normalize worship. Number three, please proceed. Go to the next scripture. And even after worship and prayer, Jesus said he cannot take the sacred things from the children and give to the dogs. Look at the woman. Yes, Lord. She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Right character. The third provoker of divine attention is character. What Jesus told this woman, it could have triggered anger. Come on now. My daughter is sick. You are not the one taking care of my family. I just heard that the Nazareth is roaming around and I know you have healed a lot of people. So come into my house and heal my daughter. The first reasonable thing to say is that I'm not going. Please, I'm sent to Israel. Yeah, go home. But to call me a dog, to hell with your Jesus and to hell with your, your heaven. And she, she could have gone away. Nobody could have harmed her. But she said, yes, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Character. The prayer didn't work. The worship didn't work. She switched to character. What is character? The conformity to the character of the spirit is what we call character on earth. You remember Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. 
for the gift, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, faithfulness. All those things are the character of the Spirit, self-control, long-suffering. Those things, gentleness, are the character of the Spirit that is supposed to be expressed in and through us as believers. The woman could have been angry. Anger is a demonstration that there is another spirit present. Anger is a reaction. Bitterness is a reaction. Are you on the same page? So if Jesus could say this and the woman couldn't react with anger, but rather have to adjust to the sayings of Jesus to let him know that, listen, even if I'm a dog, it's fine. Dogs have even the right to eat the crumbs that fall from their master table. So hurt me, come hurt me. I need help. Oh, Jesus, what am I saying? I'm saying that where prayer is not enough, where worship is not bringing the answer, we must sustain the grace and the capacity to build the character. Character, character. Corresponding character to the kind of miracle we are expecting. Hallelujah. Character. God took the Israelites in a long journey and the Bible says so that he can try their heart to know what is in them. He came to Abraham. Give me your son, your only son, the one whom thou loveth. When Abraham submitted a young lad on the altar, lifted up the knife, then God said, now I know. Your character has been proven. So this age-long issue of unanswered prayer, this age-long issue of um delay childbirth delay job delay whatever it is that we are expecting in order to prove that god is alive in us it has one agenda to build character in us when i give you the one million dollars will you still sponsor crusade when i make you the ceo will the money be safe in your custody can i trust you with my daughter as a wife can i trust you with my son as a husband when i give you somebody's child to come and live with you, would you give the same food you give your children to the child? The whole idea of God seeking allegiance from us is to build character in us. Character. The ability to conform to the very image of the Christ is called character. We cannot worship, we cannot pray, and we cannot take character out. This afternoon message is very simple. That there are three indicators. There are three major indicators that provoke divine attention. That whoever builds character, come hurt me, will meet God somewhere along the way. Come hurt me. Samuel was living in the house of Eli with two of his deviant children eating the best of God's meal. Hallelujah. And Eli was doing his best as a father. But Hophni and Phinehas, these guys are terrible children. They pick the best meat, eat it, take the best tight, eat it. And the house of God was ruined. ruined and Samuel was there. Genuinely, genuinely innocent, not even knowing God. Because of the character of meekness, God came to him. Samuel. And innocently, he didn't even hear God. He has to run to Eli. Samuel. Genuinely, he didn't know God. But because the character in, in, is intact, God said, no, I can work with this guy. Even before I start teaching you the rudiment of ministry, your character, when I look at you, I don't see bitterness. I don't see envy. I can see you are genuinely interested in people. I know you have many flaws, but I can work with you. I choose to, to work with you. They are going for people to try to struggle to configure their mindset. Look at Jesus. When Jesus came, there were already the Pharisees, the Sadducees. All these guys were intelligent people who already know an aspect of the Bible. In fact, some of them wrote the Bible. If you were Jesus, your job could have been to just call the Pharisees and then just ordain them for ministry and change their mind. But he knows that it takes a long time to build their mindset. He, there was no way he could have changed them. He called them snakes. Your father is a devil and all that. He went for fishermen. That I could, these guys are innocent. Even if Peter denied me, I knew it's, for, it's because he was afraid. He chose fishermen, brought them in, built them, configured their mind, and dispatched them. When they went, they practically gave their life for the gospel. Why? The character is genuine. They, they don't know what hermeneutics is. They don't know what homiletics is. They have no idea, biblical interpretation. But the character is genuine. God can choose to work with them. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. Mm. 
the character is genuine. Now, worship is very necessary. Prayer is very necessary. But if there is no corresponding character to accommodate the purpose for which the worship and prayer is being done, that exercise is an exercise in futility. Let me teach you what these indicators produce in the life of the woman. Continue the scripture. Even the dogs eat of the crowns that fall from the, their table. Look at Jesus' response. Oh, woman! Exclamation. Oh, woman! Do you know what that means? That means I have dealt with a lot of people, but you are different. Oh, woman! Jesus answered, Your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. So, genuine faith is actually produced by the conformity of one's character to the very image of the Christ. Genuine faith that no matter what happens, my submission is just to my husband and my husband alone. No matter what happens, this vow that I have taken to stick to my wife, it is to my wife and my wife alone. No matter what happens, this vow I have taken to make sure the gospel goes to every village, it is a vow I have taken in rainy season or dry season. I will be on the run to a nearby village to preach the gospel to them. It is a vow. This genuine character display is what really projects faith. This is what tells God that God, I am ready. That's how God will watch us faith. God is not just looking at our confession. He is looking at how we behave and meet the challenges we are facing. That is how he calls faith. So Bible says, through faith, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing to suffer affliction with the children of Israel than to dwell in the tent of Pharaoh's abundance. Are we on the same page? He refused to dwell in abundance to sin, but chose to suffer affliction with the children of Israel. That one is faith. Because there is a faith that rejects. There is a faith that accepts. All is faith. So what God is calling faith in this particular context, it is our behavior after praying and worship. How do we take the responses that come? If I am God and I am silent, I have not answered you in a while. Will you still go ahead and do your Bible studies? Will you still go ahead and do your prayer? Will you still go ahead and support the missions? Will you still go ahead and support the church? Will you still go ahead and support that man of God? Will you still go ahead and provide employment for the people? Whether I answer your prayer and your worship or not, what will be your character posture in this affair? That's what he's saying. These are the biblical pillars for provoking divine attention. There are people who have no idea what in uh, revelation and mysteries are. They come to the pulpit and preach genuinely from their heart as if they are encouraging their members. But every day, thousands of people gather to listen to them. They are genuine here. They are not competing with any man of God. They are not angry at any man of God. Their heart posture is genuine, awaiting the manifestation of the divine in the life of the people they preach to. This thing is called character. Father, thank you. So they are provokers of divine attention. When you pray, you can get divine attention. When you worship, you can command divine attention. And when you add character to these two indicators, you can get the whole of heaven's attention. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And at the end, O woman, Jesus answered, your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. As you desire. As you desire. It is a character that will manage the miracle that heaven will bring. It is a character that will till and keep the field that heaven will bring to you after the prayer and worship. If character is not there and God grant us power, Everybody is in trouble. Hallelujah. That is why electricity wires have insulators. The insulators are the character that are supposed to help manage and harness the, the, the catastrophic consequences of the naked wire. The, 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 the insulators around the electric wire are the character that is supposed to manage the catastrophic impacts 
of the danger that that way poses. Are we on the same page? Yes. So the character God is telling us to build is to help us manage the testimony that he is about to deliver to us. When you marry a millionaire and you wake up one day and you see his picture on your TV that this guy is a scam, what would be your reaction? What would be the character? You pack your things and leave the house. That's what I'm talking about. And see, if you are not able to build a character, we cannot emerge as custodian of God's realities. Are we on the same page? Yes. We must build character. If you don't build character and God grants you the power, you will kill people. Because every day, there are things to make you angry to speak out. To prove to people that you are an apostle of faith. One day, the disciples were working with Jesus. And people got them angry. And Peter and the others said, Master, should we call fire on them like Elijah did? Look at what Jesus said. Don't you know the spirit with which you were with? Don't you know the spirit with which you were brought forth? Are you not aware of the spirit with which you were disciple? That means I came as the definition of the entirety of God. Love remains the highest of all the fruits. Because if you can laugh, you will not cheat. If you can laugh, you can manage your, your anger. If you can laugh, you will not remember the errors of your partner in the past. If you can laugh, you can endure affliction. If you can laugh, you are gentle. If you can laugh, you have self-control. If you can laugh, you can manage joy. Love is one of the major character that must be built by the believers in order to walk in this thing. God give an attention. Hallelujah. When God keep you and give your brother a job, your brother that you, you completed school long ago before he, he came, well, how will you manage that testimony? You wake up one day and kill him like Candy to Abel? No. Character. There are many murderers in the church today. There are many killers in the church today. There are many thieves in the church today. All of us are worshiping. All of us are praying. But how many of us have allowed the Spirit to build character in us? How many of us can say sorry, can say please, can say pardon me? As, as, as simple as these words are, a man will feel proud just to, sell the, to tell the wife sorry. The wife will feel angry just to say I'm sorry. That should tell you we are heading towards somewhere. That is not good. Ty and Sidon were manifesting this character trait and they refused to accept the entire gospel. So they must not be used as a reference to warn a nation. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Pray in one minute that Lord, help me develop the corresponding character for what you are bringing in my life. Pray that prayer for one minute. Help me develop the corresponding character for the kind of testimony you are bringing in my life. For the kind of miracle you are bringing in my life. Help me develop the corresponding character by the help of the Holy Spirit. Pray that prayer. Father, thank you. Mala grando ko paraka dis kafa. Zele credo ko suka prandish ke de bahasta. Father, we thank you. Take all the glory, take all the honor. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. If you are listening to me, say, Pastor Richmond, I want to be born again. I've listened to your broadcast. I've been blessed. Help me give my life to Jesus. Help me build the requisite character for what God is about to do in my life. I'm here to help you. The purpose of this broadcast is to help you know Jesus more and more. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I have heard your word. I agree. I'm a sinner. I am ready to receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my personal Savior. Forgive me my sins. Deliver me from evil. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. If you pray that prayer, you are born again. Look for a Bible-believing church. Register your presence. Join the department. Be effective and help carry the gospel across the nation. The Lord bless you. Once again, this is Richmond Dwarf, your host on Wedding Season Encounter Broadcast. See you next week, same time.